Frame Raider. Now we're moving on to general homebrew games, which are basically original projects designed first and foremost to be played on PSP, not based on a pre-existing game, or at least if so, only by concept. Something I had a number of comments about in the first part of this video, there's a PSP Counter-Strike clone running on the Quake engine that I didn't check out. This was actually on my list of downloads, but unfortunately after looking I couldn't find a copy. I did find one link that requires a password, but that's the best I could do. Thankfully, however, we will be looking at a 2D Counter-Strike homebrew game in this video. While we're reflecting back on PSP homebrew ports, there were a few games that didn't run very well, like Duke Nukem 3D or Quake 2 in this case. Thankfully, there is a perfect solution to these games. PlayStation 1 eBoots. Yes, if you have the original PlayStation 1 games, you can quite easily convert the discs over to PSP eBoots to play on the go, free from any of the technical limitations that the respectable but underwhelming homebrew ports did. You'll have no issues playing Duke Nukem 3D via Total Meltdown, or Quake 2 via, well, Quake 2. Sure, they're not exactly the same, but they'll give you a more streamlined experience. Plus, you can configure the controls, and even use a PlayStation 3 controller if you're using a PSP Go. So, one last game here for ports. Doing this one last because it's kinda half port, half homebrew. Sonic Robo Blast 2. So I had actually found out about this one pretty late and had to come back to record this bit. I've heard about this homebrew game before on PC, but I had no idea it was brought over to the PSP. Sadly enough, I couldn't get it to work. So why am I bringing it up? Because it seems this is still a very popular homebrew. Only, not for PSP, but on PSP. What do I mean? Well, the PSP eBoot is often used in conjunction with the PSP emulator for Android now, where it supposedly works just fine. Pretty strange, right? Download the PSP homebrew port of the game to play it on a PSP emulator on Android, but not on PSP because it doesn't work there anymore. At the very least, I was unable to get it to work. Maybe it just doesn't work with the PSP Go for some reason? No idea. Alright, back to the dedicated PSP homebrew. PSP Connect 4, a 3D game of Connect 4. If you know the concept, you know the execution. Mario Boat. You, uh, you guide Mario through a river, on a boat. That's really all this is. Rockbot. As far as I know, this is an original take at a Mega Man game and feels pretty faithful to the original NES titles, but that's just me speaking as someone who isn't too familiar with them. Battlegrounds 3. Now this is a pretty interesting one. You're put into a big, all things considered, battle arena as a big old tank. Eliminate other tanks. More fun than I was expecting, though unfortunately my game ended with a crash. The Newton War. Here's a puzzle game where you have to attract certain objects, avoid others, collect and bring them to certain locations. Has some kind of weird magnetic effect. In time, I'm sure you could get used to the formula here, but off the get-go, I wasn't 100% on what I'm supposed to do. Kurok. Another original Quake mod. Well, as original as a Turok clone can be. Gonna kick these guys off my island. Uh, yeah, so this is pretty awesome. You get a whole mini-campaign to play through as Kurok, Turok's long-lost brother or something like that. You've gotta be freaking kidding me. Dinosaurs on my island. <laughs> alright, Kurok, alright. The game essentially turns into Goldeneye, so that's something. Hey now, should I really be going in here? Nibbler, the arcade classic reimagined in a new style with much more forgiving gameplay. I daft. In the mid-2000s, there was a lot of stuff dedicated to Daft Punk's harder, better, faster, stronger. Basically, you just play along and recreate the familiar tune. This is pretty cool, even if the entirety of the song isn't here, so there's only so much you can do. Most of it is, though, so that's cool. No Bugs Allowed. Certainly one of the most ambitious PSP Quake mods. It's an old-school FPS where you've got just one enemy, the bugs. Kill them to finish a wave, then use your granted credits to buy more weapons. See how long you can last. Controls are perfect, and it's a lot of fun. CSPSP Counter-Strike in 2D. Think Hotline Miami, but tactical. It also entirely looks the part unlike the 3D Counter-Strike on PSP, which honestly does not look so hot to me. Granted, I haven't played it, but I did play Counter-Strike in 2D, and I had lots of fun with this. Spaceball. Well, this is impressive. A fully-fledged 3D golf game for the PSP. Oh, unfortunately, it just seems to be one level. That's a shame, because it works so well. Metroid Escape Mission. Like with the earlier Mega Man game, this is an original take on a Metroid game. It's very linear and not very exciting if I'm being honest, but hey, it's an effort. Pokemon Grey. I'm not sure why you'd pick this up over emulating the original games, but yeah, here's this. It's a Pokemon clone that just kept popping up as I looked for PSP homebrew. Not sure why, I guess it's fine for what it is. Slender PSP. Well, there's some heart put into this. However, once you've seen the Slender Man himself, all the horror is gone. Yeah, this is just goofy. He's also fairly inconsistent with the level design, he gets stuck on a lot of things. The gameplay is sorta of there if you like that kind of thing. Also, if you like hearing someone slam into single piano note over and over, then this is the game for you. Breakout. 
Man, if this doesn't scream mid-2000s homebrew, I don't know what does. Carapix. Remember these cursed handheld games with the weird plastic mold that stuck out in front of it? Seriously, what's the story behind that design? Anyhow, if you had one of those, you knew the only game on it worth a damn was the one with the cars. And here it is. The one with the cars. Doesn't work as well in this aspect ratio, but it is still a bit of fun. Laserx 4. A mirror reflection puzzler where you've got to redirect your laser to the goal. What is this song from? I swear I've heard this from somewhere before. Zonergy. It's a runner game. You play as a running white sphere with two race car feet. Don't get hit. Don't do it now. Or you'll hear Minecraft Steve's pain sound. <laughs> Las Aventuras de Santa Claus. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. So take these presents as I shove them into your chimneys. Just make sure to avoid... the Grinch, I think? Worm Warrior. You're some military bro killing off poor defenseless worms. He also has an incredibly limited vocabulary since he just repeats the same two phrases over and over. That was left handed. That was left handed. Keep him coming. That was left handed. Keep him coming. That was left handed. <laughs> that was left handed. I'm convinced at this point that the military bro is in fact left handed. Runaway Car. A pretty cheap runner game except you're a car. Kind of funny how it's just a 3D model that shifts from left to right perspective at your command. Collect coins and dodge obstacles. G-Square. Another one I played quite a bit back when. You press L and R to shift angles, applying gravity to your square which you must make from point A to point B, with lots of hazards around the way. Collect gold to increase your time. Space Golf. Remember Space Ball from a few moments ago? Well here's Space Golf! It's the same game with different graphics and, what do you know, more than one level. I have no idea what came first, the ball or the golf, but Space Golf is the only one worth downloading. Winnie the Pooh. I have no idea what I'm doing. Marble Orchestra Sensation. Starting off with a very wonky, unskippable camera panning cutscene, we're definitely destined for greatness in this one. This controls so poorly and slippery that not only do I have no clue what I'm doing, but I can't even begin to figure out how to do it. Also has a dang enthusiastic text box narrator guy. Let's try a different level. What a piece of... P. Ice of... Yep. Mobile Assault. Pretty impressive graphics. It's basically a Desert Strike clone from what I gather. Protect and destroy. There's a list of commands you can undergo as well, such as airstrikes from your base. Cool game if you're into that sort of thing. PSP Minesweeper. Yep, it's Minesweeper. Dungeons Assault Run. Armed with a sniper using Doom 3's pistol sound, you run through a house filled with thieves and kill them. At least that's what it looks like. I don't think there's much to this beyond this concept. PSP Pong. One or two players with the D-pad and face buttons. Pretty good. Annoying repetitive music though. PSP Cannon, a part of the true PSP lore. Okay, but really, it's a game where you adjust the cannon and attempt to meet the target mark. No sound, but the gameplay is entertaining. Left for Quake. Confusing on first starting, you're just kind of thrown in there. Nonetheless, once you understand the mechanics, it's a very interesting, kind of terrifying Quake mod made to play like Left 4 Dead. I don't know where this is. It's probably Loki intending to replicate the hospital from the first game. It plays fairly well, and yes, those zombies sneak up on you, which is quite terrifying. Laser Survivor PSP. A simple game where you collect stars and dodge incoming lasers. Nothing more to it than that. See how long you can last in the multiple skill levels. Would be better if it had sound. Polygon Hockey. Virtually the same as PSP Pong, although this time you can move around the entire playing field as you would in a game of table hockey. Silver Edge. Side-scrolling shmup that has a self-aware... plot? It's also a bit of a bullet hell at times. As far as these genres go, it's the best of the bunch for PSP Homebrew. Jelly Car. This isn't what was eventually a PSP Mini release on PSN. I wonder how that came to be, but no, there was an earlier homebrew release of the game and this is that release. It's a pretty hilarious game with comical sound effects. You can increase the size of your car at any time, which dramatically alters the physics of the already jelly-like car. You'd think this kind of thing gets annoying pretty quickly. I guess it kind of does a bit, but it's so much fun that it's hard to complain. PSP Rubik's Cube. It's a Rubik's Cube. It's on PSP. You've got a number of settings to play around with. If you like Rubik's Cubes, unlike me, then you'd probably get a kick out of this. PSP Snake. Loud, obnoxious music to a game of Snake, with what feels like a watermark constantly spinning in the background. Ugh, not the kind of presentation I'm looking for. Simon. It's the same as the Simon electronic toy you'd find in stores. Good fun. Dave Nukem. So this is the first of a list of e-loader booted games. Specifically these I had to come back to because they didn't work off the bat. 
I'll let you know when we get back to easily booted games, but for these next couple, keep in mind you're going to need eLoader if you're playing with modern custom firmware. Right, Dave Nukem. If you're familiar with the original DOS Duke Nukem side-scroller, you'll feel right at home with Dave Nukem. The graphics are mostly the same, the gameplay is precisely the same. I do love the original Duke Nukem, so I was thrilled to see this. Not sure why everything is given a magenta filter, but hey, that's a pretty great color, so who could complain? PlayStation Pool. Imagine a PlayStation Pool. Well, this isn't it. Nor is it a good way to play the game, Pool. It is so, so slow. Our rootage. I'm not sure what I'm playing here, but it's definitely some kind of bullet hell game. I think the goal is to defeat the on-screen boss for each stage. There aren't any traditional enemies, just this one source of bullets. Pretty good. Serious Dungeons is what you get when someone sees a bit of Serious Sam footage and thinks they know what it's all about. I'm not sure what engine this is running on, but basically it's a small corridor shooter with several levels all consisting of one floor. No verticality here. Weapon models are taken from Quake 3, as well as the enemies in the form of its multiplayer models. At least all the sound is intact from Serious Sam. And they properly converted over the textures, but I doubt the creator was all too familiar with Serious Sam because even the basic principles of the game, like what are meant to be door textures or just wall decoration, aren't associated properly. Also, the music is just very short loops of music from the game, improperly applied to the levels they say they are associated to, which they very obviously are not. I guess this is... something? More of a curiosity piece than something you'd want to play. Very absurd. Squares. Collect the squares that aren't red. As you do, more squares will pop up. A special power-up lets you eliminate the red squares like in Pac-Man, clearing the playing space. A strangely enjoyable game. Super Mario War. This is kind of half port, half homebrew. It started out as a homebrew title for the original Xbox, to my knowledge, which you probably know this from since it was quite popular there. You're thrown into a small Mario arena where you gotta stomp the opposition to win. Well, that's the last of E-Loader. Forthcoming the rest of the games I'll mention here, you shouldn't need any special software to run. Robotron 3D, Anonymous Tipster. An original take at Robotron, this time a first-person shooter, sort of. You even have objectives to fulfill while you eliminate the oncoming threats, such as destroying nearby generators. Good fun. Shame there's no sound, though. Sandbox. From what I gather, this is an earlier homebrew release for the PSP, simply demonstrating a physics engine someone made. Yeah, for the time, this is impressive, especially with the hardware. I don't think I've otherwise seen physics like this on a PSP game. Is it worth playing, though? Eh, not really. Especially considering that with its several features, you have to basically restart the entire game from the XMB to change anything. Zombie Crisis, an original first-person shooter that looks and feels like a 90s build engine game. The gunplay is very satisfying, though the level design is quite primitive. Nothing incredible, but a good time waster, and I think it's worth a recommendation. There are a lot of PSP homebrew games by a company called Retro Guru. While these games are available on multiple platforms, I wouldn't go as far as to call them ports, since it appears as if a lot of them were brought over to the PSP around the same time they had been released. Let's just consider these homebrew games, as that's what they really are regardless. Squirks 2 and 4. Squirks was originally a 1996 platforming puzzler that was remade in 2010. The remake has three sequels. I played 2 and 4. These seem to act somewhat like Rage games, where a lot of the gameplay is focused on trial and error. That said, it's by no means as hard as something like Cat Mario, far from it but it plays a number of tricks that are likely to get you on first try. Not bad. Fruity. Replicate what you see on the right screen by exploding fruits in the correct pattern. Something like that anyways. Honestly, I didn't see much appeal from this one. Gianna's Return. A new adventure into the infamous world of Gianna, a character originally designed for a Mario clone on the Commodore 64. If you like the other Gianna games, you'll like this. It's highly familiar to the source material. Zump, The Final Run. This music is a bit much for me, but the game itself is loads of fun. You have to get from point A to point B, but doing so is quite uniquely difficult. Blue platforms disappear as you walk on them, so you in many stages can only go a certain way once. Make sure you've planned your route before going in, else you'll probably find yourself needing to restart. Further you get, more spins are brought into the experience. So, here's an oddity. Not Retro Guru, or even a PSP eboot for that matter. No, this is a TIFF photo that supposedly when opened begins a game of Snake. I have no idea how they would have programmed this to work on the PSP, however, whether it did at one point or not, it doesn't seem to anymore. I guess a firmware revision might have broken this strange idea. We're now finished with PSP Homebrew from the Games folder, but that isn't to say we're quite done yet. Back before modding PSPs was as easy as it is today, you might not have the most trust in yourself to do it properly without bricking your system. Or, perhaps your PSP model was one of the newest, meaning it was yet to be cracked. There was something that out of the box you could do on any PSP, however, which opened you to a world of new games. Well, more so reliant on the homebrew community. Introducing the world of Flash for PSP. 
one of the most unreliable, slow, and clunky ways to experience Flash. The PSP web browser was impressive for its time, able to bring Flash games or even videos with you on the go. More specifically, files or sites that dealt with the file association .swf, often redirected from offline HTML sites so you would save to the PSP common folder. The more advanced the game was, generally the slower it would be on the PSP. In many cases, the files would require too large a memory for the PSP to read, so it would simply display a memory error image and a red X on the top of your screen. Sometimes closing one of the three available tabs would help to load them better, but not always. While you can download and play Flash content on your PSP, again, there were homebrewers that designed games specifically using these Flash capabilities. Quite often, these were based on gimmicks or operating systems that were by no means anything remotely similar to what they were trying to represent. Hell, even for the games they optimized to be played on PSP, didn't play anywhere near full speed. But at least it was something you could do for free at the time. Nintendo DSP This one gives the PSP a Nintendo DS interface, kind of. It definitely has more to offer than the original DS interface. Internet browsing, paint, a freaking periodic table. Oh my goodness, it's been a minute since I've seen eBuddy. You remember that thing? I used to use it all the time in my PSP browser back then. Wow, that's a flashback. DSP also has games like this Mario thing. And of course it runs perfectly. It also comes with some other Flash games. You know, a dentist game, a Garfield lasagna game. The kind of stuff you think of when it comes to Flash, more or less. IPSP. How about an iPhone interface? I thought this was so cool some 10 plus years ago. Now I can tell it's a very simple web page with some goofy Flash games on it. How do they run? Well, you guessed it, not well. Still, it did introduce me to a couple fun ones, like whatever this one is called. This portable game brings me back and I don't even know why. Something about this just feels so nostalgic. Is it the music? Is it that familiar mid-2000s font on the title? Oh man, Bowman 2! Windows Vista for PlayStation Portable. Strangely enough, the download called it PSP Windows XP, but yeah, I guess it's Windows Vista. This bundle had a lot of features, as simple as they may be. Whatever, I was mostly in it for the games. Like, uh, kill the pop-ups. There's a slow as heck Kaboom clone in here, which I didn't know of until today. How about this Ant Arena game? That was pretty fun. X5 Leopard. I guess to fit in with the theme of copying other operating systems, you had to have a Mac one in there. I don't think there are any games in this package. Unless they're hiding somewhere. Wow, a Mac without games? It cannot be! Well, at least the idea was pretty neat. So there's a dive into the PSP's homebrew scene. There's a lot of great stuff to check out, and a lot of not-so-great stuff. We've taken a look at both today, so hopefully you've learned a bit about what this community had, and in some existing cases still has, to offer. Regarding others I didn't show today, even some I might have shown small glimpses of in the XMB here or there, I can't promise these will work. A lot of old PSP homebrew simply isn't capable of being played on modern firmware, even through backpedaling via programs like eLoader. There's only so much you can do, so while a lot of this is practically dead, especially considering dead mega upload links, there's still a decent amount of fun to be had in this once thriving scene. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you frame raiders in the next video.